So as requested by these people, I'll teach you how to interpret a frequency response graph. Before that though, I'll work under these assumptions. The people watching this video, number one, doesn't know how to read graphs in general. Two, doesn't know what the frequency refers to in terms of audio. Three, doesn't know the segments that make up a frequency response graph. And number four, doesn't know how to interpret the graph associated with a target profile. If you know a topic already, feel free to skip through the video using the timestamps posted on screen right now. All right, let's start with the most important question. What are graphs? Imagine two rectangles in an upright standing position with one rectangle being taller than the other one. Say the taller rectangle is labeled A and the shorter rectangle is labeled B. Just by their height, you can distinguish that the data presented through A is much larger and more significant than the data represented in rectangle B. This is the basics of a graph. Data is represented in a visual way that makes it effective even without fully grasping the data, much like how Apple gives you a graph and say that they're like 2x better without any sort of context. Your brain immediately fills up and assumes the reference even if the reference doesn't exist. Frequency response graphs are represented by lines. So, using the same labels, if line A is higher than line B, you would automatically assume that A is greater than B. Now let's add a vertical line on the left and a horizontal line at the bottom. The vertical line is referred to as the y-axis which typically includes the labels for gain in a frequency response graph. Knowing that, let's place a zero beside the horizontal line, one in the middle, and two at the top. Just by showing the numbers, we can see that line A is one tick higher than line B. A tick in this case is gain represented in the unit of decibels. Decibels or dB is the standard international unit for sound pressure levels or gain relative to reference. Now, for the horizontal line, let's add two labels, 100 under line A and 300 under line B. These are frequencies which are represented by the SI unit Hertz or HZ. Moving forward, frequencies in audio are what's referred to as the sound waves or pitch that travels through the air then gets picked up and recorded. In our case, we were listening to recordings and the lower the frequency, the longer the wave and the deeper the pitch. Really low frequencies will look like a straight line and be more or less uniform. On the other end, the higher the number, the shorter the wave and the higher the pitch. Really high frequencies have a lot of oscillations that make them go up and down within limits. Using the same example, line A represents the 100Hz frequency with a decibel rating of 2 relative to 0 and line B represents the 300Hz frequency with a decibel rating of 1 relative to 0. In this example, the lower frequencies are louder than the higher frequencies which leads us to the next Part, the segments and the sections that makes up a frequency response graph. By the way, we're currently at 400 subs, so if you found the video helpful, please leave a like, subscribe, and comment what you think so I can improve and I can implement it in the next video. All right, going back. Let's say that line A starts with one decibel, can go up to three decibels, and represents the 20 to 250 hertz range. Line B starts at one decibel, can go up to two decibels, represents the 250 to 4k hertz frequency range. Then line C starts at one decibel, can go up to 2 decibels and represents the 4k to 20k hertz frequency range creating the three sections of the graph that goes up and down relative to the gain and frequency range that each line encompasses. These three sections represent our bass, mids, and trebles within the 20 to 20k hertz range typically associated with the limits of human hearing. To make the explanation much easier, I have here a burger and a burger has three primary parts the bun, the patty, and the sauce. Let's start with the sauce. The sauce provides the excitement and the richness of the burger but too much sauce and you get a mess that goes pretty much everywhere. And much like the bass, if there's too much bass, it bleeds into the rest of the sound which in turn can make or break the tone. And much like a burger where if it has too much sauce, you might also find it to be a bit overpowering. The patty is the heart and soul of the burger where if you don't have it, it's not really a burger. It's simply a sandwich that doesn't taste right. The mids are much like the patty where if they're too recessed, it can be overpowered by the bass and the treble where if they're too forward, it can sound thin and shouty. Last is the bun which ties everything together where if the bun is soggy, hard, or falling apart, the burger just becomes a mess and the flavor simply stops adding up. Much like the treble, too much of it and you get something that's harsh and hard to listen to. Too little treble makes the bass seem too much and the sound becomes muddy and soggy. Then if it's 
it neither too much nor too little it can still fall apart and be undesirable if not balanced with the rest of the sound this is essentially how a frequency response graph functions it's a two-dimensional representation of sound based on tuning now how do you read a graph the graph functions much like a menu where it can tell you about how say a burger will taste but never provide the full experience much like a burger that looks great in pictures and has appealing ingredients say like bacon actually eating the food is a different experience altogether which can either be a hit or miss once you actually get a bite this is actually going to be the importance of being able to properly read a graph and knowing what target tuning you prefer going in blind can be a rewarding experience but it can also easily turn into an expensive nightmare now let's look at the numbers do bear in mind that the segment of a graph varies from graph to graph and person to person so for the sake of consistency find one set and stick to it for me this is how i interpret the segments 20 to 60 hertz is the sub bass which includes stuff like the deep rumbles of a moving train it's less of what you hear and more of what you feel so there's less usable information here for vocals 60 to 250 hertz is the bass where things like the kick drums bass guitars live this part is what people commonly associate with a good set of say ims or headphones despite that not being the entire story 250 to 500 hertz is the lower mids where the fullness warmth and the weight of the vocals as well as the instruments come from if this segment is too much the sound can be muddy or thin if it's too low 500 to 2k hertz is the mids speech clarity is often associated with this section where too much can lead to vocals sounding close or harsh while too little can make the vocals sound far and buried this is also where the majority of the instruments live 2k to 4k hertz is the upper mid-range where the s's the t's and the k's show up along with the sharpness of instruments this range contributes to the detailed retrieval of audio devices just like iems 4k to 10k hertz is the treble where the crispness sharpness and clarity of sound lives too much can lead to ear piercing sounds while too little can make the sound to be dull or boring but tune just right and you get a higher perceived detail 10k to 20k hertz is the air range which is as high as the human hearing can theoretically go and it affects how natural open and realistic the sound feels we also lose the ability to hear frequencies in this range as we grow older to demonstrate how this translates to a practical scenario let's use the graph of the moon drop space travel comparing it to the harman 2019 target as an example all right so what i can see here is the sub bass is boosted along with the 69 to 250 hertz range also being boosted with emphasis on the 169 hertz which give it its signature fun and exciting sound that they're known for okay so the lower mids to upper mids follows the target profile where there's emphasis on the uh, 2.6k hertz which adds to the fun and excitement of the sound trouble from the 5 to 10k hertz range is messy but not without reason this is to smoothen out the treble by making them less peaky without losing any of the perceived detail the air range receives emphasis on the 12 15 and 18k frequencies before rolling off to provide the natural sound that you would otherwise not get if they weren't emphasized if you didn't get anything from that interpretation that's completely fine this is simply the best way i can describe the sound according to how i hear them and how i see them on a graph what's important now is to familiarize yourself with the graph of your favorite iems headphones or speakers so that you can isolate what sounds good for you making your search more streamlined much like a menu knowing the dish you prefer will speed up the process of ordering but if it's a new restaurant the method of cooking slightly varies from what you're used to which is why two iems can be tuned to the same target and might even look the same on the graph but still sound different tell me if you've learned something from this video and comment down below what target tuning you prefer i love listening to your guys's thoughts and opinions so let's discuss them if you also have any other sort of like suggestions for future videos leave them in the comments and i'll do my best to make them possible leave a like subscribe and share the channel to a friend click the video on screen right now as youtube thinks that you like this so i'd say give it a go this is how to read a frequency response graph my name is charles goodbye